Good morning, teachers. I'm so excited to be with you today in, uh, just keeping it real, <laughs> in my science closet. I am still a virtual teacher. Our school is about at 75% capacity with face-to-face -face instruction, and some teachers are doing face-to-face, -face while others, like me, are still doing virtual. They need my real classroom to serve as overflow space so that we can socially distance, but, um, so I'm here in the science closet. It's really actually not that bad because the acoustics are amazing. Just kidding, they're not that good, but it's a little bit better, I'm sure, when I pull out my ukulele. And I do have everything at my fingertips that I need um, if we're doing a science experiment. And I have a sink, which is pretty awesome. So this year looks a little bit different, just a little bit different than it has in the past. And so it makes everything just a little bit more challenging as we are fixing it to this new environment. And so today I wanted to talk about the one thing that I really, really love, which is the science fair. I know not everyone's favorite thing is a science fair, but to me, it's my favorite thing because students get to choose their project. They get to choose their testable question. So there's lots of choice involved in a science fair project and they get to explain what they observe, what they learn from a scientific experiment, which I think is an amazing thing that gets to be accomplished at a science fair. And plus they get to compete they get to see um, judges, they get to talk to judges, and they get to have those ribbons and awards that they get for having an amazing project and hopefully being able to take their project on to the next level, like the regional science fair. So we've had to do it a little bit differently this year as we have everything. <laughs> and I just wanted to show you how my school in particular and my district is working and our regional science fair is working to make this happen in a virtual way. So I hope this helps you give ideas. And if you have ideas for us, please leave it in the comments because we're just getting started. So if there's something else we can implement, implement to make it better, I definitely wanna do that. So science fair virtually, that's what this video is all about. Are you ready? I am, I introduced it to my kiddos today. So <laughs> uh, let me show you how we are doing a virtual science fair. Here we go. So today I'm hoping to show you how to create a virtual science fair that will be meaningful for students, just as meaningful as an in-person science fair. And I'm not for sure how this is gonna turn out, <laughs> but these are the steps we are taking to hopefully make this a process that is rewarding for students because it's not fair. It's not fair that they have to do it this way. And um, I want them to really enjoy the science fair and get a lot out of it to, you know, this is their chance. This is their opportunity to be true scientists, to answer those testable questions and to learn so much, observe the world around them. Okay, so it starts with this. This is our flyer that goes home. It actually is going home in our, our family newsletter that is also virtual each week. This is our science fair, <laughs> our little logo for this year. Um, it has a little human here and then a human on a bicycle and then an airplane and then Orion, which is pretty cool. Um, Orion is the capsule that's gonna take us to the Martian surface one day. So our science fair comes all down to a quote by Robert Goddard, who is the father of modern rocketry. He said, it is difficult to say what is impossible for the dream of yesterday is the hope of today and the reality of tomorrow. Whenever I tell this quote to my students, I always tell them about my grandmother. So my grandmother all used to ride in a horse and wagon to the big city to get supplies and things that they needed for their farm. And she told us about how she would lay in the back and look up at the stars and the moon and wonder what was there, what it was like, what they were. And she would say a little poem that went something to the effect of, I see the moon and the moon sees me. God bless the moon and God bless me. <laughs> um, so, and then in her lifetime, not only did she get to ride a bike and drive in a car, she loved the Caprice Classic. Um, I think she had a couple of them. <laughs> But um, she also got to ride in airplanes and she got to see men walk on the lunar surface, Americans, which is pretty awesome that she was able to experience all of that in her lifetime. And so I want students to know that whatever they're dreaming today is definitely going to be the reality of tomorrow as we innovate uh, in this day and time. So this year's science fair, unfortunately, is 100% virtual and students 
will join our Google Science Fair classroom. So our Google Science Fair classroom is right here and I want to show it to you. So students will join our classroom and this is where they will receive all the information they need to make their science fair project a success. So uh, first off, our stream it is difficult to say what is impossible in the science fair project. Yes, that's cool. Okay, so first off, of course, you have to have your science fair t-shirt. Now our science fair t-shirt is pretty awesome, I think. <laughs> so we have our little logo here, our little banner. And then it says it is difficult to say what is impossible. And then of course the dates for our particular science fair. Now custom ink is a great website to do some fundraising because I think they cost a, the t-shirts cost is about $18. So we're going to get about $2 per shirt that we'll be able to go to our science department to buy more lab equipment, of course, because we always need money to <laughs> buy lab equipment. But what's really great about custom ink is that they, that students will come here they will pay for it here so you don't have to deal with money you don't have to deal with anything like that students will come here and pay for it they can have it delivered to their home if they're virtual students they can have it delivered to school and so it just makes it a lot easier to do t-shirts because if you've done t-shirts in the past you know that it's not always easy to do t-shirts so this is um, very easy and then at the end of your promotion at the end of your your t-shirt sales they actually send a check to your school so it makes it a lot easier and it's very good for virtual because um, it can be sent to their home as well as the school. Also in our Google Classroom on the stream, I have our science fair packet. I also have, we are the explorers. We are the explorers. If you have not seen this YouTube video, you need to. And plus it is narrated by Optimus Prime. So the students get a really good kick out of it. So we are the explorers. And it just reminds us that, you know, humans, this is in our nature to explore the world around us. And we do that through science and through science fair projects. Okay, under the classwork tab, we have everything that they will need to make their science fair project from determining what testable question they will use to the template they will use to the judges score sheets. It's all here. So first off, picking a testable question. So of course, I put on there Science Buddies. Science Buddies is an awesome website. You can do the topic selection wizard. So in this particular one, you can say you're a student. You can put in when your science fair projects do, how much time you have to work on the project, what grade level, and if there is a specific area for your project, and then you hit continue then students will be able to fill out what they are interested in in this science interest survey. And as they do that, it will make recommendations about different science fair projects for them to do. That would be great testable questions. So I love science buddies. Also in our classwork tab, we have a how to. So we have another link to the science fair packet. We have how to do an elementary science fair project, which comes from our regional science fair. I also put in there science fair tips from the Santa Fe Alliance for Science. Um, they're a pretty awesome organization. A bunch of Los Alamos scientists that are now retired served as our judges when I was a science fair uh, person in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I got to head up the science fair there and be able to work with those amazing scientists who really brought the science fair alive to all of the students that were in my school in New Mexico this video so that we could um, understand how to do a science fair project and it actually takes you step by step and it is a great video for students to watch to know how to do a science fair project. We also have our science fair template and we also have the regional template, the student checklist and a sample judging sheet so that they will know what their science fair projects need to be like and what um, expectations there are for the science fair projects in the regional science fair. Let's look at the science fair template really quickly. Um, so since our science fair is gonna be virtual, we have to have our projects be virtual as well. And so this is the way that our district is going to uh, allow students to create their science fair boards virtually. So we made a Google science fair template and this actually comes from our regional science fair our district made it a little bit bigger because the regional science fair project I'll show you um, 
is pretty small. <laughs> and we thought that would be difficult for our uh, fifth grade, fourth grade, third grade, uh, definitely students. Um, this would probably be very easy in high school, but um, we're not quite there yet. So we wanted our students to be able to manipulate the slides easily, and so we just made it a little bit bigger for them. So they have a problem, their testable question, their hypothesis, the background information, their variables, materials, procedures, results, their photos that they can add. So they're just adding into the template all of the necessary steps to a great science fair project. Now, one thing at the end of this is the reflections on learning. So because we're not gonna be able to have the judge right in front of the student, this is the place where they put in answers to questions that judges usually ask about their science fair project. And so that reflection is gonna serve as the interview, which I'm not too happy about, and I may try to change it as we get closer to the science fair and to the judging process, because I think having students in front of the person uh, who's judging their science fair project and having to think right on the spot and answer questions is so meaningful for students. And we definitely might have to do that virtually through um, Google Meets or Zoom. So um, that is the template that is in our Google Classroom and the Austin Regional Science Fair with a student checklist and the sample judging sheet so students will know what's expected of them. Okay. So now how are we going to have our virtual science fair? Um, and it's gonna look a little bit like this. <laughs> okay, so you can create this however you want. Our district technology person created this one. Um, and you will just link the project with a number and then parents, students, the judges, when it's time to judge, will be able to click on the links that are associated with each of these numbers and it will take them to the science fair project. Now you can do this by class, like fifth grade. You can do it by um, Miss Bright's class. You can do it uh, however you want and then just link those. It will be a PDF by the time they link it on here so that the judges can see and so that parents and students can see what other people, what other students did as well in our virtual science fair. Now, our school is gonna have a science palooza day where in English and math class and science class, they're going to be doing science related activities. And then that afternoon, well not afternoon, that evening, we'll have um, science opportunities in school and virtual for students and families to learn more about uh, the things that are nearby. Uh, like our zoo and the high school robotics team and other things that we can bring into our school and it's gonna be pretty awesome. And the science fair winners will be announced then as well. Thank you for joining me today and I hope that there is something in there that you can take back to your schools and use to create a science fair that is meaningful for your students. One in which they truly get to observe, experiment, write down their results and learn something new about the scientific process and how we innovate. And of course, have those science fair shirts. They're so awesome. I love science fair shirts. I think deep down every teacher wants to be a fashion designer because I know we like designing t-shirts. So uh, definitely make it your own. Have it have meaning for your students. Challenge them to learn and to explore the world around them. And as Robert Goddard said, Who's to say what is truly impossible? This is gonna be great for our students because we're putting in the extra effort to make it a memorable event, a special occasion, and a chance for them to truly be scientists. We've got this. The dream is about to become reality. <laughs> Until next time. Bye.